Hi, I'm Courtney Sanborn from CourtneySanborn.com and Courtney Sanborn uh, Illuminating Points YouTube channel. And today I want to talk about self-trust. And self-trust and self-confidence, I feel like, go quite hand in hand. Um, and I'm going to talk about tips for building self-confidence and self-trust. And I'm also going to talk about, we'll start with, um, first, why we want to even have self-trust or self-confidence. Like, what? what's the point? So somebody that trusts themselves is really quite indestructible. Like once we trust ourselves, we're not leaving ourselves. We're not abandoning ourselves. We're not going to other people asking for their advice, their opinion. Um, with self-trust, others' opinions start to matter less. And this is actually a very liberating thing because really the um, you know true health is wholeness. And true wholeness is goes along with self-trust. It's this authenticity. It's this ability to be our true selves without looking outside of ourselves for validation or others' opinions, or is this right or is this wrong, or am I doing this right? There's just this trust, this knowing, and this is not built quickly. In fact, I would actually say that we, for the most part, live in a society and then through just generational programming that's been passed down to us over and over, we have kind of been taught to not trust ourselves. Um, there's all, you know, there's constantly things outside of us that are being sold to us to make us better because we're not good enough, which that can really, quote unquote, you know, through marketing and whatever else, we're not good enough. We're not pretty enough. We're not thin enough. We're not smart enough. All of these things don't trust yourself. Don't trust your own ability. Once you obtain some sort of perfection or some, you, you've obtained some level, then you are now, you know, um, good enough, lovable enough, et cetera. And when we can sit in some deep, whole self-trust and self-confidence, we, for me personally, the, the more that I've sat in, in self-trust and self-confidence, um, the less I want to, or am frankly able to listening to all these marketing schemes around what I should be and should be doing, et cetera. I find them painful and not pleasant to listen to. And I, therefore I don't, um, I just don't want that programming in my mind. And then, um, we, we seek out less of others' opinions. There's more of this just deep comfort within ourselves to be ourselves and to trust ourselves and to trust our own decisions and our ability to make the best decision for ourselves. And through this, I feel, um, it's actually a very attractive thing. We end up attracting people to us because, there is um, some energy behind this, some energetics around um, people want to be around somebody who is confident and trusts themselves. So um, how do we build this? Like, how do we gain self-trust? Where does this come from? And I would, I would argue it's a bit of a slow process because building trust, especially if trust has been broken, self-trust has been broken or we don't trust ourselves. Um, you know, I think it was Brene Brown that said something like, Trust is like a jar of marbles and, you know, through each small action, like another marble is put in the jar and then, you know, the jar eventually fills up and there's, there's trust. And then in one clean fluid sweep, the jar can be knocked over and all the marbles go out and then rebuilding it. You have to slowly put those marbles back in one at a time to build the self-trust. So how do we do this? Um, making and keeping very small. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying very small because assuming we're just starting to build our self-confidence and self-trust, making very small promises to yourself. And I would say daily, I promise that I'm going to get up on time. There you go. There's a promise. I don't know. It doesn't have to be that. I promise that, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do some sort of physical activity tomorrow for a minimum of 10 minutes, five minutes, you know, whatever it needs to be. And then once it's completed, then we um, move on to the next, the next day, not necessarily the same thing that day. They're just small promises every day that over time we build up enough confidence to think, okay, like now I'm going to promise myself that tomorrow I'll do 30 minutes of physical activity tomorrow and Wednesday and Friday. X, Y, Z, and then we complete those. And there starts to be this self-trust, this self-confidence that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do for myself. And 
And through that, that ripples into other little things throughout life. I'd also like to say that just witnessing when we have broken a promise to ourselves or broken self-trust to ourselves, being able to recognize that is also part of the process because there have been times where um, I've said, I'm not going to do something and then I do it and I've done it or I'm in the middle of it. And then I realize, oh crap, I said I wasn't going to do that again. And I kind of have to sit with myself like one would a child or one would a partner or one would anyone else that you've you know, broken a promise to and, um, and, and hold myself in that moment and really recognize, oh gosh, like I just did something I didn't want to do. And I did it to people please, or I did it in self-abandonment, or I did it because I was scared I wasn't going to be liked or all of the things that come along with you know, self-abandonment or when we, when we don't keep promises to ourselves. And that, that's, a, that's also building self-trust because we're humans and we're not perfect. And so um, I just hold myself there like I would a child and I apologize to myself. And then I, you know, say, I'm going to try to never do this to you again. I, I, I promise to listen. I need to go slower. You know, what led up to this moment of self-betrayal or self-abandonment? And then just remapping, just looking, and then you just start over again. Like there's no, there's no perfection. Um, but that is tremendously helpful in the trust building too. So making and keeping small promises to ourselves, recognizing when we've broken a promise to ourselves and, and sitting with that. How does this feel in my body? This breaking of a promise, this, this self-betrayal, this people-pleasing. And sometimes it has to happen over and over again until we come to a place where we can recognize it before it happens. Um, keeping promise to myself, small obtainable goals, and then sitting with myself when I've broken a promise to myself. Additionally, one other thing that I do is I like to I like to really review my day at the end of the day. And I'm a bath taker, so I often do this in the bath. Um, sometimes I take a walk and do it, but I reflect back throughout my day and I go back and I think, what did I do in my day that I wanted to do? Like what, what lit me up today? Like what made me so happy and brought joy? Because this is health and healing. When we are expanded, when we are in our flow, when we are grooving and happy, um, this is healing. This is authenticity. There's, you know, so many messages that are being told to the brain and body here. And it doesn't have to be around work. It can even be around like my exercise this morning or, um, you know, when I'm reading this book or, you know, just looking at that, like, what did I give myself today that was kind to myself that lit me up? And then also the, the opposite of that, like what, how much of my day was involved in doing things I didn't want to do? Um, how much self-sacrifice was there. And then slowly, because, you know, these are the life, the, the ship of life doesn't turn really quickly, you know, slow, um, deliberate movements make for long lasting changes. But then I ask myself, um, okay, so if a big part of my day was doing things I didn't want to do, how can I go back and, um, you know, how can I eliminate some of these? How many of these are necessary? And then I start to, to look at that and then remember those next time I'm doing them. Do I have to do this? Can, can I outsource this? Can I hire someone to do it? Can I eliminate it completely? Why am I doing it? Am I doing it because I'm expected to? Am I doing it because I, won't, I'm, I don't want somebody to not like me? Um, just really getting, just really getting, asking ourselves these questions and getting used to asking ourselves these questions. And then one other thing I want to say is if you can't answer this question, if there's ever a question that can't be answered, just stay with the question. Just hold the question. Don't ask somebody else. Don't Google it. <laughs> Don't just um, hold the question and maybe even write it down and sit and just simply holding the question in the mind and holding the question in the heart over time, the, the, I promise you the, the answer will come. It always comes. It always has for me. The question, like they, they come answers to these questions. Um, yeah, there, when a sincere question is answered or a, when a sincere question is asked, a sincere answer will appear. So I hope this served you. 
And uh, these are my thoughts on self-confidence uh, building for the day. And make sure you follow me on this channel and you can um, subscribe to my newsletter for musings and free practices at CourtneySanborn.com. Thanks. Take care. I have a special offer from now until the end of 2022, especially for anyone that's listening that's an astrology lover. Since Illuminating Points podcast is new, I'm trying to build up reviews because then the podcast reaches more people. So if you would be willing to go and leave a review and take a screenshot of it and email it to me, I will send you back a three to five minute personalized audio recording just for you about your astrology, something I see in your astrology or something about your natal chart. So this is how it works. You'll go to either Apple or Spotify and write a review, take a screenshot of the written review and email it to illuminatingpointspodcast at gmail.com along with your date of birth, time of birth and place of birth. Within a week, I will email you back a short audio clip telling you about your astrology. It'll be personalized and tailored just to you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for considering leaving a review. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks so much for listening. Let me tell you some other ways that you can find me. More information about my work and this podcast is at CourtneySanborn.com. For free audio meditations, follow me on Insight Timer under Courtney Sanborn. And you can find me on Instagram as Court Sanborn. And additionally, there's an at Illuminating Points podcast handle. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. And it would mean so much to me if you left a review. And since I don't record podcasts on a schedule, you'll want to make sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you're notified when a new episode is released. You can find more teachings and watch video recordings of the podcast interviews on the YouTube channel. And that handle is Illuminating Points by Courtney Sanborn.